I've been expecting this. Inside here, we have 37 new species of Drosera that we're gonna be planting up today and growing. These are tubers of Tuberous Drosera. They're a type of Drosera native to Australia. And as you can tell, they make these little tubers where they store all their energy and then come winter time, like it is now, they grow these little stolons, I guess. And these turn into carnivorous, sticky drosera leaves. And these tubers are actually two weeks past the date that they should have been potted up and watered. So most of them have already started growing, as you can tell. And if we don't get them potted up soon, they're gonna die. We have something like 25 seeds in here as well. These all need to be potted up too. And seriously, if these guys don't get potted up soon, they, they will die. So for us to do that, we're gonna need some heat and sand. <laughs> and something to mix it in. And the thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is that you're gonna to wanna to rinse the sand. That is really dirty. The next day. And that's much better now, now it's clean. It's very simple to grow these plants. All you need is sand and you need the peat and you need a ratio of one is to two of peat is to the sand. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take two pots full of sand, put it in here and one pot full of the peat and put it in here and mix it all together. What you should do is that you should sieve the peat out so that you can get rid of all these sticks and uh, make sure that it's super fine for the tubers. I have to do 37 pots and I'm not in the mood really to do that. So it will take ages and I really need to plant up these tubers. As you know, they, they might die up pretty soon. So we're in a bit of more of a rush. Here we go, it's all mixed up. So we have some super, super sandy uh, media here with some obviously peat inside to help hold some water and bring the water up in the base. And this should be perfect for our tubers. So let's talk a little bit more about them. Tuberous drosera come in many different forms, but the one thing that they all have in common is that they form these type of tubers here. Tubers range in different sizes, as you can tell, these super big ones. And there's some tiny little ones here and obviously lots of different colors. You get some that, some that are almost purely white, like these two. You get some that are completely dark red. You get some that are speckled like these and these ones over here. And some that are elongated yellow and speckled with red too. So you get lots of different types of them. But as I said, they all have one thing in common they all make these tubers underground. These drosera are native to Australia and New Zealand. And when they grow out from their summer dormancies, they throw out these tiny little carnivorous leaves that obviously attract and, you know, kill and eat insects, just like any other drosera would do. Obviously, they also come as seed, as you can tell over here. We have all these seeds to pot. And these seeds are gonna be potted up into these pots that we just made together. And we'll talk a little bit more about them as we go. But for now, let me just talk a little bit about the seeds. Tuberous drosera seeds all have to be planted in the same media that you would plant the adult plant in. As you can see here, uh, we have a mixture of two is to one of sand, propagation sand, and peat. When planting these seeds, you have to do it just like you would any other plant. You take your, any other drosera, I mean. You take your seeds that should be in paper, which these obviously are, open it up. Remember to not breathe, because if you breathe, then the seeds will disappear. Here are our seeds. And gently just tap them in on top of the soil, just like this. And just like that, you've sown your tuberous drosera seeds. 
So these seeds are obviously endemic to Australia and New Zealand. They need to be grown in autumn time. First week of March is best. We are in the third week of March, which is obviously not the greatest, but it's still okay. As long as it's going in, into autumn and the cooler temperatures are coming, then they'll be happy. Put them onto their pot. Then you put the pots onto about two centimeters of water and you let them germinate all by themselves. Eventually you'll see tiny little seedlings popping up at the top of the pots. And then you know that you've had good germination. And just like that, We've now planted three new species of tuberous drosera that we're going to grow together. Now let me finish up the rest of these and then we can get to the more interesting part of this whole ordeal. Planting up the actual tubers and watching them grow. They are quite big as you've seen so we need to use quite big pots. These pots are about double the height of these. And these are actually super good for adult plants of almost all carnivorous genuses. Because they allow for super long roots and also there's not a lot of space here at the top being wasted. So let's finish up planting these seeds. We can jump right into the more important stuff. See, wasn't that easy? Now we just spray them down so that they can make good contact with the soil and we're gonna put them outside. And here we have them. Six different types of tuberous drosera. ready to be planted into their new home. We're doing six types of tuberous drosera at a time and we have to do it at night. As you can see, it's completely dark outside. It's midnight, about half past 12 at, you know, obviously midnight, because you have to plant them while they're asleep. But this is how they look. These guys, they grow in winter when the rains come and in summer when it's super hot, they retreat underground and form these little tubers where they store all their energy. And then come growing time or autumn, or fall if you're American, they grow these little stolons right out of the middle of their tubers. And these grow up and out of the ground and form the beautiful drosera leaves that we are used to seeing. So let's start packing up these six. So what we wanna do when we're planting them up in their new pots, these are 20 centimeter pots, just by the way, nine centimeters across on both sides. Uh, the reason why we're using these pots is because tuberous drosera grow very long roots. So if you imagine this whole pot here being see-through, you'd have the tubers generally around here or here, roots here, and the growth coming all the way up and out the top of the pot. That's just a basic guideline. And at the bottom, I've packed it full of sphagnum moss so that the super sandy peat doesn't escape. So as I was saying, when we pack the tubers into the media, we want to keep the eye of the tuber upwards. What the eye is, is basically where the growth is coming out of. So the growth coming out of those tubers that you saw earlier is going to have to face upwards so that the plants are growing in the correct direction. So this is the first time that I've ever dealt with tuber drosera, but I believe that this little bump here would be the eye. So what I'm simply going to do, put the tube on the top of the media, just rest it like that. Same for the next one. There is actually some growth coming out of there. And just like that, we have our first two tubers potted up. Don't forget the label. Oh, okay, well, we're gonna have to put the label in afterwards seeing as we don't have label slots for these pots. But next, all we need to do, take our media right over here and just gently fill up the rest of the pot all the way up to the top. There we go. First one done, ready to go outside. And this is where things start to become a little bit more tricky. As you can tell, we have some really big tubers over here with some super long growth. So getting them into their pots is gonna be much more difficult than the smaller tubers. Secondly, some of the tubers have started to die. Can you see there how the end of the tuber started to go black? That shows that these tubers 
have been in these bags for way too long and are already starting to dry out and essentially desiccate from all the heat and lack of water inside of the bags. But there's only one thing that can be done now and that's to pot up the plants and hope that they survive. We're going to have to do this very slowly with the biggest tubers first in one of the pots that has the least amount of soil. Being very careful to not break off any of the growth. Look how much growth there already is with this one tuber. I hope they can all fit into this pot because I don't want to make a second pot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in, cram them all up together and let's see what happens. So hopefully we have a super full pot. It should look actually really nice. You guys have actually got to see how crazy this is. So check, I've put about eight tubers in there right now, but these are the ones with the longer stolons. As you can see, I've pointed all those stolons upright so that they're growing right at the top. The rest of these ones have to go at like at about an inch higher because the, the growth point and the tubers are at the almost the same height. So these guys have to get covered up and then I have to plant those tubers all along here. This is quite difficult and I, I don't know how exactly I'm going to get the sand around these stolons without damaging the plants. Even the slightest bit of weight on, this, on these tubers will cause them to move and obviously change the direction of the stolons from facing exactly upwards, which is what we really want. Seems like it's going okay for now. Let me change your angle. There we go. So hopefully you guys can actually see the heart of the plant while I'm trying to put the soil around them. And this is why you shouldn't wait two weeks or so before planting them up because then you have this issue. And if they're in the ground, it's okay. But if you're planting them and they're growing like this, it makes it super difficult. Okay, the tubers are all potted up, the stolons are a little bit skew, which we will fix when we put up more soil. But you can see there one, two, three, four, five, six stolons, two tubers had no stolons. So it looks like it's going okay for now. Okay, I think that's it. Now we just gotta, gotta put some more sand on, super carefully again. And these should be sprouting within the next week or so because they are super, super ready. And as badly as I want to tamp down the surface to make sure that there's good contact, I'm not going to because I might damage some of the growth, growth points. So I'm just going to spray it with some water and see what happens. So as you saw, there was some movement of the soil downwards. So now we can just fill it back up and then hopefully we should be done. And I wanted to put this in early so that I would make sure I didn't damage enough the plants. Damn, okay, I guess I'll put it on this side. 
And there we go. Our first one, and that took us half an hour. So I'm gonna get these guys all planted up and I'll catch you guys afterwards. And there we go, guys. Everything is all potted up now. It's nearly three in the morning or something, and I'm exhausted. But we have planted them all up and I had made sure that all of the plants are now properly placed so that the stolons are growing upwards and covered perfectly, just like you saw me do it with the last clip. And that means that these plants just start growing very soon. Hopefully we caught them just before they die. But to catch any updates, remember just subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to see all of our future videos. In about a week or two, I think, our Saracen and Darlington are coming out of the fridge so we can plant them outside and they can start growing as well. And I don't think I'm going to be getting any more seeds from now on. I already have about 80 new species all sown outside and I'm super, super tired of staying up late. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember to subscribe and follow us on Instagram if you want to see more updates on our collection that we're growing together. So thank you guys. Do you guys see that? A tuba. We missed a tuba. And I don't know what species it is. <laughs>